This watch sitting right beside me is Amiga's best kept secret. Here it is. In my hand right now is the Amiga CK859, and I believe it is Amiga's best kept secret. And let's go over why. Welcome back to Time in the Wrist at Chisholm Hunter. My name is Harrison, as always. And today we have this epic piece from Amiga. But, but the thing is, I was so caught up in the hype of the Amiga Swatch Watch that I forgot about this model. It was kind of released under the radar. I mean, they didn't do as much marketing behind it as they normally do. And I don't know why, because this watch is epic. The CK859 was inspired by Amiga's 1939 wristwatch. Now, let's talk a little bit about the movement that was in that wristwatch. This model had the 30-T2 manual winding small seconds movement, and it's absolutely stunning. Now, this watch was totally inspired from that 1939 model. And you can see this in a lot of the aspects of this watch. So as we go through them, you'll see a lot of Amiga's DNA popping up. Before we get into the specs of this model, it's important to say that these models are numbered edition. They're not limited edition, but they are numbered edition. So if you look on the case back, it has numbered edition and then it also has the number of this watch. So let's take a look at the measurements. And I'm not gonna lie, before I even start the measurements, this took me by surprise. It's not often that I find myself attracted to a vintage looking watch, especially one with a leather strap. I've just, I've never been a fan of leather straps but this works. The case diameter of this model comes in at 39 millimeters, which is pretty perfect for my wrists. And because it doesn't have a bezel, it has more of a, a bigger face. The perception of the face is that it's bigger because it doesn't have a bezel, and that makes it absolutely perfect for my wrists. When watches are bigger, 42, 43, and they have a bezel, it shrinks down the perception of the face size. But when they're smaller, they can afford not to have a bezel to give it more dial real estate. The thickness of this watch comes in at 12.4 millimeters according to our digital calipers, maybe just under that because of the way our digital calipers work, just maybe slightly under. And I think that's partially down to firstly, the domed sapphire crystal glass that you can see here. And it's actually, I have to say this, it's really nice domed sapphire crystal glass. It's not too aggressive. It kind of comes up just like a bubble, but it doesn't go too much that you've got kind of like a like an edge to it, if that makes any sense. And then obviously because it's a manual wind movement and not an automatic movement, it doesn't have a rotor. And this means that it can be that little bit slimmer because it doesn't need that rotor to wind the spring. The Sapphire Crystal Glass actually has anti-reflective coating on both sides. Now, I know that people, some people don't like that because they think that the AR coating will scratch that little bit more. And theoretically, yes, they are right. But I can tell you for a fact that I've had my Amiga Seamaster for a good two years and I've battered this thing. You can look at the steel in this thing, you can really see the scratches and I've not got one scratch on the Sapphire Crystal Glass. Then you get to the fact that this is more of a vintage piece. It's more of a dress watch. So you maybe wouldn't wear it for everyday wear. So I do think my opinion on this is that you should be fine. The case comes in stainless steel and it actually looks really, really pleasant. And I think part of the reason why it looks so pleasant is because firstly, it's mostly polished on that bezel here, but you've also got a combination of polished and brushed on the lugs. And then it has a really short, really stubby crown. I actually like the aesthetics of the crown. I like how it blends into the case that little bit more, making it look that little bit more elegant, that little more vintage. But what I would say is it can get a little bit difficult to turn. Now they have got the notches in that crown so that you can turn it, but because it sits so close, it can get a little bit difficult at times. But I do suppose on that note that dressy watches aren't the most practical. I think this goes in every sense of the word. I think that dressy watches focus on style and they leave the two watches to the sports watches, like my Omega Seamaster 300 meters that I have on at the moment. The thing is that I have three or four sports watches sitting at home and not many dress watches, if not any dress watches at all. So I've said this in previous videos, but I'm actually looking for more dressy watches now. And it's just where I am at in my watch journey. And I think that's why 
I'm so attracted to this model. The strap on this model is a tanned leather strap and it looks brilliant. I have to say it would age really, really nicely. I can imagine this being a really vintage piece. And with the aesthetics of this watch being so vintage and inspired from the 1939 wristwatch, it does work so, so well. And one thing I have to say is that this is really weird, but it's because it's new, it just, it smells so good. Let's move on to the face and the limit, well, the limited bezel really quick. But before we do, let's talk about what is on your wrist today. Let me know in the comments, it's time for the Chisholm Hunter tradition, which is of course, wrist check. Let me know in the comments, but I've got the Amiga Seamaster, of course, NATO strap, brilliant watch. Probably the king, actually, in my opinion. But let's have a conversation. The bezel on this model is of course very, very limited and it's actually in polished steel instead of brushed. So what I would say is be careful when taking this out and about because the last thing you want to do is scratch this beautiful polished surface. And it's a shame because polished steel looks so nice, especially when you reflect it in the light. But because I'm so clumsy, I do damage things. But then again, it's a dress watch. So it should be for special occasions and special occasions only. The dial on this model is absolutely jaw-dropping. And I do not say that lightly. This is genuinely one of the most beautiful watches I've seen in the last six months. And we review on the Chisholm Hunter channel a lot of watches. This is so nice. Let me start with the dial. So the dial actually comes in AG925 silver. So it's not a pure white. It's almost like a silvery white because it's actually made out of silver. And the fact that the dial itself is a precious metal it's a really nice touch, but let's get into the rest of it. There is a lot of detail on this dial to go over, so let's begin with the hands. So the hands actually come in a really nice blue color. It almost looks like anodized copper. It's that really reflective, shiny blue, which works wonderfully with that dial. And then we go to the next thing that you'll probably notice, which is that vintage looking Amiga logo. It's obviously inspired by this wristwatch. It's stunning. So that's all I'm going to say about it. It's absolutely stunning. I love that they've, they've used their vintage logo. It just looks amazing. The small seconds counter on this watch is at the six o'clock mark. So you have the 12, three and the nine mark as the sort of indices and you don't have the six mark because obviously it has that small seconds here. Everything about this watch is symmetrical. And for those of you that know me, you'll know that I love symmetry. I can't get enough of symmetry as a photographer, videographer. That is what you look for in a watch, especially one that is vintage. And this just, everything adds up. Everything's symmetrical and I absolutely love it. The dial actually has a 60 minute counter around the outside. You can actually see the little lines running all the way around the outside. And also the lines and the indices and the numerals and everything on this dial are actually a very dark blue color. They're not actually black, they're very dark blue and they play wonderfully again with that silver. Now that we've covered the beautiful dial, it is time to look at the movement. And it's important to say that this water, this water resistance, this model is actually water resistant to 30 meters, which is quite impressive for a dress watch. I mean, you're not gonna be taking this under the water anyway because of that leather strap but it is quite good that you've got that peace of mind. The movement on this model will be talked about after Chisholm Hunter. Chisholm Hunter are actually authorized retailers for Amiga watches. If you want to shop this watch or any Amiga watch in particular, make sure you click the link below. The movement on this model is the Caliber Amiga 8926. It's a manual winding movement with co-actual escapement. It's certified by Master Chronometer, approved by Metas, and resistant to magnetic fields reaching 15,000 gauss. It has a small seconds display at the six hour mark, a free sprung balance with silicon balance spring, two barrels mounted in series, and a rhodium plated finish with Geneva waves in arabesque. It has a 72 hour power reserve. What's more than that is that all of this beautiful technical genius from Amiga can be viewed through the open case back which is absolutely stunning. So why did I label this video Amiga's best kept secret? I believe that people should be talking about this watch more than they are. I believe that it should be as big as a Seamaster release or a Moonwatch release because it's stunning. But what's more than that is it's so different to any of the mainstream Amigas. I mean, when you think of Amiga, you automatically think of the Seamaster or the Moonwatch, but you wouldn't necessarily think of this. 
And I think I'm gonna make this video in order to change that because this deserves to be spoken about. Now we get to the crux of most watch purchases, which of course is the price. This watch comes in at 5,810 pounds. I have always said on this channel that I'm going to be very honest with you. I believe that this watch is damn near perfect. The only thing that I would maybe change if I was nitpicking, this is very, very picky, is the crown. But that's tiny. I do think that maybe for a first watch, I would be careful with this because you might scratch it, you might get it knocked up, but see for a second watch or a third watch, if you're going for that more dressy, elegant model that you maybe wear on special occasions, I think this is worth looking at. I think it's worth trying on. And the fact that it's numbered, the fact that it's cost and Meta certified, the fact that it has so much history adds so much to it. I would consider this. At the point of us filming this video before we before we go, we are at 9,400 subscribers. We are closing in on that 10K mark. And I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to everyone that supported this channel and is part of this amazing watch community. We have some really exciting projects coming up. We are going to be out and about in Scotland. We're going to be doing more watch vlogs. We're going to be traveling through to Edinburgh, going down to London. We're going to be doing some really exciting stuff and it's all thanks to you guys. And what I wanted to say is if you guys have any suggestions on what you would want to see, please drop them in the comments. We would love to get involved. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Time in the Wrist at Chisholm Hunter. My name is Harrison, as always. And if you want to support this channel and join the Chisholm Hunter Watch community, make sure you subscribe here or follow us on Instagram, which is Chisholm Hunter Watches. It's our personal Instagram. Thank you so much for watching again, and we will see you in about three days.